Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Hey, Epic Conquerors. Wow, it's so good to be with you again on this particular Epic Conqueror podcast. I'm going to be talking about something that I don't know if anybody really wants to hear about it, but I do know that when we understand it and we accept it and we receive it and we want it and welcome it, Woo! It's a blessing to our lives and a really rich treasure for us to cherish. So now, have I piqued your curiosity? Are you ready to talk about patience? <laughs> I thought so. There's this old joke, you know, where somebody is praying and they say, God, I want patience and I want it now. And that's just so funny because we all understand the angst of coming from that perspective. You know, what's really going on when we are feeling that way, when we are making those kind of statements and we're getting frustrated with things, what's really going on is that in our mind and to our way of thinking, something is being delayed longer than what we wanted it to be delayed. Think about it for a minute. And you'll realize, especially we live in this instant society, microwave everything, instant access, everything should be now, now, when I want it, right this minute, don't be a minute late. All of those things really give us opportunity to exercise the powerful spiritual benefit of patience. It takes a lot of self-control, a lot of strength, a lot of personal, uh, emotional integrity and quotient to be able to be patient in the midst of times where we're feeling frustrated because everything's not coming together like how we wanted it, when we wanted it, how we wanted it, and all of that. Mm -mm -mm. I know I've been in that place a number of times. Because with my personality, I'm kind of like this stallion horse at the starting gate, like, let's get this race going. And yet I have a flip side too, where I can just chill out and just really wait on things. But it just kind of depends on what aspect of things we're talking about. And maybe you're like that too, are you? Think about it for a minute. What kind of things really sets you off? And kind of triggers your impatience and what kind of things are you kind of okay with it's kind of like in some things i think like maybe where our kids are concerned let's use that as an example because i think we could all relate but when our kids are young and they're so cute they can break something or make a mess or do whatever <laughs> and we're like inwardly we laugh uh, and then we just clean it up and we just kiss them and just love them and you know it was an accident and it's okay but then if someone else like maybe teenagers or our spouse or somebody that is doing something at work that we don't appreciate and they do something or break something ooh, we could get frustrated so we can lose our patience with them so there's different kinds of ways you could think about it different avenues of life where this enters the picture but i think in one way we could also look at it kind of like how we have our traffic signals we have the red light which means to stop we have the green light which means go but we have the yellow light which means to wait until it turns and so we have that kind of a situation in our lives sometimes where Sometimes God allows things to move forward fairly rapidly and we're like, yeah, God's answering my prayers. <laughs> and then there's other times where things just come to a screeching halt. 
And so we can also say God is answering my prayers because maybe he's closing doors that need to close and that's okay. And we want that. We want him to do that. So that's good. Thank you, God, for helping me to know that that's not it. So that's okay. But it's that yellow light, that waiting time that often comes about as we are on this journey of life that really tests us in our ability to exercise patience. And how else are we going to exercise or develop that muscle unless we are sitting at a yellow light from time to time? And sometimes when we think that light should be turning and it's not, ah, then we can really get ourselves aggravated, can't we? <laughs> yeah, you can tell. I know it from experience. Mm -hmm. So delays, what about that? I've come to discover as I look through the rear view of my life, it seems like in reality that God is using those perceived delays as a part of his strategy. And I say perceived because from our point of view, it seems like it's a delay, but in reality, you're going to get where you need to get right on time because God's never a day late and a dollar short. I can tell you that much. He really knows what he's doing and he knows how to get you where you need to be when you need to be there. So it's just our timetable and his sometimes aren't quite on the same page. Yeah, we've noticed that, right? So many times. But in this case, when we're talking about perceived delays, I've come to discover that that's part of his strategy in order to bring us into his purposes at precisely his time for us and for that situation. And if you think about it, there's a lot of moving parts that need to come together sometimes for a situation to unfold and come to pass. And so sometimes there's a lot of other people and a lot of other circumstances that have to get moved around and shifted and shuffled in order for that thing to come into place just right. I was thinking the other day when I was out and I was doing some Facebook Lives for our Epic Conqueror community. And at first I wasn't gonna do one, but then I just felt like, no, you need to do one. And as I did it, and then when I left, then to start coming home, cause I did it in my car, I, came upon a scene that just really took my breath away. There was an accident that was so horrific. This entire humongous RV vehicle had just blown up and the whole back half of it was burnt, wide open, burnt to a crisp. If I hadn't had done that Facebook Live and waited before I got on the freeway, I could very well have been right there when that RV exploded and could have had a, a difficult situation come about as a result. <laughs> so I have to say thank you, God, for that delay, that yellow light, that no, wait a minute, go ahead and do this Facebook Live. And hopefully the Facebook Live turned out to be a blessing on top of that. But for me, it was like, wow, thank you, God, for that yellow light, because in that case, he saw ahead and he saw what was coming about and he just kind of held me in one place for a bit until it was safe to move forward. And I think delays are like that. We need to perceive them in that way rather than allowing ourselves to get so frustrated and lose our patience because you know what happens when we lose our patience? Yeah, we can get uptight, we can get short with people, we can get angry, we can say things we should not have say. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So being patient, being able to be gracious in your patience, those are some skill sets to learn, which require part of the fruit of the spirit, which develops in us, which is self-control and long suffering and meekness and all those other wonderful good portions of God's spirit that he's developing in our lives. So some of the discoveries that I've made while sitting at the yellow light waiting for it to change green, there's about oh, seven different little things I would like to just talk to us about in this episode. The first thing I've come to discover is he's thwarting the enemy's schemes. 
you know, we do have an enemy, right? It's the devil. Yep. And it's the spirit of this world, the God of this world. And because of sin in the world, Jesus said, there are always going to be tribulation and trials going on. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. In other words, life happens to everybody. But the enemy has sometimes strategic plans to try to take us out of the game, if you will, to cause us to get derailed or to get stuck or to just give up altogether. And sometimes that time of waiting where things are not coming together or manifesting or appearing for us like we wanted it to appear, it can also be that God is literally thwarting the enemy's schemes to literally take you out or to do real severe damage in your life. So we have to consider those things. And I would suggest you read 1 Corinthians 2, 8 about that. That would be really a good thing for you to do. And the second thing I've noticed while waiting, sitting at that yellow light, wanting it to change so desperately to green, is that he's testing my heart. Will I humble myself or will I get hardened towards him? Because sometimes I've seen Christians get really mad at God because he's not coming through for them based on their timetable of when they think he should come through. I've heard people say things to me because we passed for 25 years. I've been in the ministry for 45 years. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of things. You know, they get upset with God because they've given, they've sown, they've tithed, they've blessed people, and they, they feel like they're on the short end of the stick in this particular season. And so they think, you know, that this isn't fair. God's not blessing me like what the Bible says. I should get blessed for my sowing and giving. Well, there's a lot of things about that we could talk. Maybe that's another whole episode. But the point is, God always keeps good books. And you will never sow or give towards the things of God that he will not repay. Because he'll owe no man anything. That's scripture. That's Bible. So payday will come. But sometimes God requires of us to give in times of famine, to test the motive of our heart. Why are we really giving? Are we giving because it's so easy to do we don't even notice it, but we just want to win some brownie points? Or are we giving out of a heart of love and generosity to really bless somebody and to help somebody, even if it costs us, even if it takes away from us having maybe some comforts in life? We're willing to share and to sow because we want to give out of a heart of pure love. Those are testings of the motives of our heart while we're in that season of waiting that God is able to reveal and expose our hearts to ourselves because sometimes we can't see our own heart motives until God lets things get stripped away in such a way that we're naked and exposed and open before him with whom we have to do, as the scripture puts it. And then we can really see the motive of our heart. We were just serving God really as a way to kind of have some leverage over him maybe. So we have to think about those things. We have to look at the motives of our heart and understand where is this really coming from? Are we frustrated that God's not getting things to happen quick enough for us in our timetable? So then the next question begs to be asked, and is he really the potter and am I the clay? Or am I wanting to be the potter and I'm wanting to tell God to be the clay and let me tell him what to do? Yeah, so we have to switch things around. So yeah, sometimes we're at the yellow light because he's testing our hearts. Think about it for a little bit and see about some things that you're going through that maybe are frustrating to you in a certain area. What is the motive of your heart in your waiting? Why do you want what you want? <laughs> Let's find out. Dig deep. Okay. The third thing that I discovered as I look in the rear view of my life about the times of sitting at the yellow light or waiting is God is actually allowing us an opportunity to bless others in the midst of our trial in the midst of our lack, in the midst of our don't have enough. 
do we really have joy? J-O-Y, Jesus first, others second, and ourself last. J-O-Y, Jesus, others, yourself. Or do we pout and withhold because we're not happy with our situation, so we've got ourselves first. And whenever we're first in the equation, not a whole lot of joy, just let me tell you all about that. <laughs> so we have to kind of consider that. Our opportunity that we've been given by God, what a blessing to have this presented to us so we can check out our own heart, the generosity of our heart, the motive of our heart. And we have the privilege of blessing others in the midst of our painful times. Oh, that's really something special that God gives us that opportunity to do that. Then the fourth thing out of our seven, I've discovered that God is sifting out our unbelief and distrust. Meanwhile, he's strengthening our trust in him. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. Sifting. Have you ever been sifted before? Sifting takes a shaking, shaking going on to sift and to let something fall through the fine mesh so that the bad stuff goes out and you're left with the good stuff or vice versa. But it's a sifting process or a shaking process. It kind of juggles you around a little bit. Are you feeling a little bit tousled and juggled around? shifted around, sifted around. Yeah, well, God's working on your faith, your unbelief, your trust, and your distrust so that you can sort yourself out. I mean, what a blessing is that, right? Because you want to come out on the right side of that thing, of that sifting. And so it gives us a chance to find out where is our faith and our trust in God that he's got this and we're going to get to where we need to get to right when we need to get to it. So chill out, relax, be patient and enjoy it. Have joy while you're enjoying it, right? Okay, you're getting the idea. That's pretty cool. The fifth thing out of the seven is I've discovered he's replacing our murmuring and complaining. And he's replacing it with hearts and lips of gratitude for what we do have in him. Do you remember the story of the Israelites and how they wandered in the wilderness and they got this really bad sour grapes attitude? They were so fussing at everything and complaining to Moses so much that he got so frustrated. Can you imagine trying to lead millions of people and they're all upset with you? Yeah, well, that's what Moses was going through as he was leading them through to the promised land, but it was requiring a lot of patience on the people and on Moses, but their complaining was deterring or lengthening their wilderness experience, actually, causing them to have to go around the mountain again. Maybe we could learn a lesson from that. So one of the things that I see that he's doing while we're waiting and exercising patience is an opportunity to replace our murmuring and complaining heart with a heart of gratitude and a mouth that speaks grateful things rather than bitterness, anger, hurt, frustration, on and on and on. You know how it goes, right? That's right. So that's a, another powerful thing that it gives us the opportunity to develop while we're in a time of perceived delay. The sixth thing, he's building our character through that endurance through that long enduring or as the old king james word is long suffering long suffering doesn't mean that you're actually painfully suffering long like in a torture chamber or something but sometimes it can feel that way right when things aren't working out like we want it to we feel like we're being tortured but we're enduring long and in that long endurance there is a suffering to that because our flesh isn't happy. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. Our flesh isn't happy, but we're supposed to crucify our flesh, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what we're supposed to do. So 
it gives us a chance to build that character to bring us into greater maturity that place where we are productive and able to keep on going even when everything's tumbling all around us we can keep on going i remember a time well there's been so many times in my life where it seemed like the whole world was coming crashing down and in repeated waves over and over again and there was like a whole decade of time where it was just horrific um, there's just no way I'm going to take time to just share all of the things that happened in that time but it was an opportunity to do all the things that I'm talking about because there were so many things that I just felt frustrated with that I felt God wasn't bringing forward in his time you know in the right time the time that I wanted it but he's actually doing a work in me which to God is more important the work that he's doing in our hearts and in our lives is more important to God than us having our temporary comfort and placating to our flesh. Ooh, chew on that for a while. That is powerful, my friend, and very important for us to consider. So I just wanted to just kind of really do a mic drop on that one and just say, you know what? It's important for God to build our character. And the only way character gets built is through endurance and long suffering going through trials that take us beyond our natural ability to handle something and some of us we can handle a lot just naturally so we have to go through something that gets past that point where we can handle it in our own so that it requires us to surrender yes to surrender to humble ourselves before almighty god because we have a human tendency have you ever noticed to fall back on what i kind of call a self entitlement reasoning you know i don't deserve this i done this 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 and this uh you know this is beyond what i should have to endure <laughs> oh really so once again, you're back to saying, God, I'm the potter and you're the clay. Okay, God is concerned about your character, my child. And he's going to complete that project working in you. Thank you, Jesus, that you do that. And he has patience. Think about God's patience with us. Now that is something to consider because that flips the coin. When I think about his patience with me, then I really say oh god you are so patient loving and kind thank you so much but when god's building our character then we are going through like silver tried in the furnace purified seven times in order to come out with that pure pure product of a pure character and holiness before the lord because without holiness we will not see the lord and so it takes a lot to get rid of this flesh and to crucify the flesh and purify ourselves. And so sometimes that's the process that's at work while we're enduring long. And then we just start feeling like I'm going to take matters into my own hands because this is not happening fast enough. And I feel all of this stress and pressure that I've got to do this and got to do that. And God's like, in light of eternity, none of what you got to do really matters. What really matters is your heart. Wow, that's something to really pause and think. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Yeah, you can hear David saying that in the Psalms and why he was pinning those words because he realized our hearts are desperately wicked and we don't understand sometimes the depth of the flesh that's at work in us but when we go through times of delay that gets exposed and so we got to thank god for the delays and the last thing number seven of seven things that we're going to talk about in this is he's testing our loyalties to him and to others because one person can say when you're going through a long trial, I am so tired of struggling with you. While someone else will say, I'm so glad and grateful that I get to go through this with you. 
and be a part of the solution. And that really is an opportunity for us when we or someone we know is going through a hard, difficult time. We get to see what is our patients doing? What is it looking like in this situation? Because, you know, like we said at the beginning of this episode, we've got a tendency, don't we, Epic Conquerors, to think, why is this, 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 this taking so long? When the actual truth is, God is always going to be on time, his time, all the time. So we can understand that we easily develop tunnel vision, don't we? It's all about, what about me? But I'm suffering right now. I'm not feeling comfortable right now. Everything's not like how I want it so that I can be perceived as got it all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. But God has a broader outlook. He's never in a hurry, but he's never late. God has perfect split-second timing. So if you're feeling pushed, that's the enemy's method. He wants you to get hasty and make mistakes. Because when everything is in position, God's boom, he's on it. It's a miracle collision. And things seem to happen suddenly. You start the day out like any other day, and then all of a sudden, boom, before the day's over, everything is shifted. And that's a God thing when that happens. Somebody said, this is so funny. They said, God, how long is a million years to you? And so God replied back and he says, a minute. And so he asked, well, God, how much is a million dollars to you? And God said, "Mm, like a penny. So then this person said, well, God, could I have a penny? And God said, sure, in a minute. Oh, (laughs) yep, 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 yep. You know, so often, it's good to laugh at ourselves because you know what I'm talking about. That's right. People often ask God to use them. And then when strange or difficult circumstances come that are hard to understand, they stumble and they grumble or they fall away and they quit. And that's just the fact of the matter. And if we as epic conquerors will be willing to look at these things, we can adjust ourselves, adjust our attitude, have an attitude adjustment, and we can put our feet on a more solid path. And that's a good thing. Psalms 23, 6 says, when everything seems hopeless, God's mercies remain. Epic conqueror, God is working things out for you. Don't move from your position of standing. And while you're standing, Do the happy dance because God is with you. He's using you right there in your situation. Don't leave your post. That's going to be your testimony. And sometimes it takes strong nerves to watch while God is developing our story for him. So keep your eyes focused on kingdom business. Keep your eyes focused on God Because he will, in the meantime, perfect those things that concern you. So, joy-filled patience is found in doing the Father's will. Let his light shine through you through all those cracks in your life, which will then illuminate the path for others to find his love through you. There's a scripture in Hebrews 12, verse 3 that we could really do well to understand right now. It says, Jesus gathered up his courage and steeled himself for the journey. He focused on the prize. Study how he did it. He never lost sight of where he was headed. It means we better get on with it. Strip down, start running, never quit. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Wow, this was an epic podcast episode. We all need this one from time to time. This is one of those that you should put in your save list. (laughs) Every now and then we need to come back to this and check how is our patients doing while we're sitting at the yellow light. 
Well, as we wrap this up, we always come to that place where we have our spiritual weapon to spotlight. And in this particular episode, I think besides patience, we know that's a weapon that we need to use. But I think as a two-edged sword, I'm going to couple that with self-control. Because self-control and patience to me work hand in hand so that we can be gracious while we're being patient. Yeah, and we can use self-control and continue to be generous towards others, even when we feel like maybe we don't have all that we thought we should have or could have or whatever. You know how we do. Yeah. So that would be my weapon, the spotlight. I wonder what would be yours. Tell us about it in our Epic Conqueror Facebook group. We would love to hear from you there, and we invite you to join us there because we have a great time in that community. And then now we come to our spiritual power affirmation that we do that gives us that wonderful declaration to say, this is who I am in Christ Jesus. And of course, our battle cry is, I am epic. Everything's possible in Christ, right? I am epic. And then we couple that with our power affirmation, which this time is a little bit of a long one, but I know you can do it. I am satisfied as I wait on God's timing. I am satisfied as I wait on God's timing. Yeah, because I think you and I both know that when it's not a God thing, we don't want it, right? So I am satisfied as I wait on God's timing. So here we go, drum roll. Then on the count of three, we shout it out, I am epic. And then on the heels of that, we say, I am satisfied as I wait on God's timing. Here we go. Drum roll, everybody, on your steering wheel, your car dash, your lap, your desk, whatever. Here we go. One, two, three. I am epic. And I am satisfied as I wait on God's timing. Wow. That is truly awesome to be in that position, to be patient while we wait on God's timing. This was a great episode. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word, for your promises, your exceeding great and precious promises. They are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. All the things that God has spoken to your heart, the things that you're believing him for, he's got you covered. He knows how to bring it to pass. But in the meantime, he's doing all those seven things we talked about. So maybe you might want to go back, listen to it again, jot down some notes, keep it in a place where you can check yourself out from time to time, because patience truly is a virtue. All right, everybody, I'm going to say ciao for now. It's been great to be with you every Monday and Friday. We drop new episodes where we just help one another as we link shields and come together in Jesus' name to do exploits and go somewhere to happen in Jesus name. Cause we are epic and we serve a risen Lord and savior who is so incredible. We love you, Lord Jesus. And so on that note, I'm going to say ciao for now to all of you precious epic conquerors. And I'll see you in the next episode or in our Facebook group called Epic Conquerors. Unstoppable. Unlock your fullest potential. Get Dr. Judy Bauer's book today. Your future will thank you. Be unstoppable.